Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna be talking about bearing failure analysis. And here to help us out is the manager of field services for NSK, Carl Casanova. Welcome, Carl. Thanks for having us here today, Tom. Hey, got a table full of bearings here, at least that's what I think, since we're talking about bearing failures. So why don't you ex explain what we got going? Well, today we're going to discuss common bearing failures and how to avoid them. Okay, so where do we start? Well, before we start looking at some specific examples, it's important to understand the reasons for bearing failure. Most bearings fail for a variety of reasons before reaching their potential life, but many of those reasons can be avoided. For example, something as simple as taking a bearing and setting it down on a dirty work surface can greatly reduce its life. It's kind of like your sandwich at lunchtime. You don't want to do that. No, it doesn't usually taste very good. And avoiding bearing failure could save you downtime, lost production, that affects the bottom line. Yeah, that's right, Tom. But the majority of failures have little to do with the bearing itself. Uh, controllable factors such as installation damage, contamination, fits, and improper handling all affect the useful life of the bearing. We want to use the bearing to tell us what we can do to improve its life and reduce costs. Okay, uh, can you explain what you mean? Well, we can, but let's put on our safety gear first. Okay, got, got our PPE. Always make sure you wear your PPE for whatever the job calls for. All right. Now, a large percentage of bearing failures are related to lubrication and contamination damage. Here you can see what the wrong type of lubrication can do to a bearing. See the smearing and the blue overheat ring? Yeah, it looks like it's really burned. Yeah, this bearing is done. Uh, this type of damage was caused when the wrong oil viscosity was chosen. Now, other types of damage can also occur from too much or too little lubricant or the mixing of different grease thickeners. Well, what about damage from contamination? Yeah, well, contamination is a little bit different, but that happens when foreign materials enter the bearing. Now, water and hard particles are the most common. The damage starts on the rolling contact surfaces and eventually leads to flaking and spalling. The condition is worse in grease applications because you can't get that contamination out of the grease. Now, let's look at this large tapered roller bearing ring here that was sent to our Ann Arbor Technical Center for evaluation. Well, this is a classic example of water damage. Now, when water and grease mix together, it forms an acid at all the metal-to-metal -metal contacts in the bearing. So you see all of these small lines? Yeah. That's actually acid etching corrosion. So over time, what happens is, though this may not look like a lot of damage, it eventually turns into this large spall in the load zone. So how can this be avoided? Well, this type of failure can often be avoided by using the right seals and sealing techniques, uh -huh. by using the correct relubrication and maintenance intervals, and perhaps by making housing modifications to help water drainage. Well, what about that other one that you have over there right here? Uh, this one. This one has what's called fretting damage. Now, fretting is when one of the bearing rings spins on either the shaft or the housing. So you, you see the brown particles that mm -hmm. are on the board of the bearing? Yeah. Those are rust particles created from either the shaft or the bearing ring when they spun due to an insufficient interference fit condition. Okay, now how can something like fretting be avoided though? Well, the main thing to do is to measure the shaft and the housing and compare those dimensions to either the original equipment or the recommended specifications. Fits are critical to the life of the bearing. It's just like a pair of shoes. Too tight or too loose can mean an improper and uncomfortable fit. Great analogy, I like that. Now, what about installation though? What are a few ways that a bearing can be damaged during the actual installation itself? Installation damage is sometimes really easy to see. You might have a, a ring that's chipped or right. a seal that's pushed in and it's really easy to see. Sometimes it's inside the bearing and it's, it's very difficult to see. Now, for example, if we look at this cylindrical roller bearing ring, if you look real close, you can see these nicks that are on this brand new raceway surface. Yeah, small, but they are noticeable. Well, so were these, this acid etching corrosion that's in this bearing, but look what happened to it. The same yeah. thing is going to happen here over time. Now, this was likely caused by some misalignment of the shaft when it was being installed, and perhaps uh, being a little too aggressive while trying to put the bearing together. Now, this type of damage can be minimized by using the correct tools and handling procedures during assembly. Now, how can any user assure that these are done correctly? You know, I want to make sure my bearing is in, machine's working, I can walk away from the job and I'm confident. Yeah, well, to get that bearing in the right way, it's really important to have the people who are trained in the proper installation and maintenance techniques of mechanical equipment. NSK can help facilitate training so that the people who are actually putting their hands on the equipment know the proper way to replace bearings. 
And that can mean a great deal for one facility. We're talking about reduced maintenance time, reduced costs, and that affects the bottom line of the company right there. More money in their pocket. Right. Now, this is a pretty expensive bearing, yeah. but the cost of the bearing is usually very small compared to the lost production and downtime costs. So getting the job done right the first time is usually less expensive in the long run. Now, what about total bearing failure? Well, for bearings that have failed, what NSK can do is inspect that damaged part like this one mm -hmm. and then look at the application and come up with countermeasures so that failure doesn't happen again. You can increase machine uptime and, again, reduce costs. Okay. Well, I know tools are very important. Are there any tools that are beneficial when you're working with the bearings? Yeah, there are a lot of different types of tools out there, but let's just look at this NSK hydraulic puller, for example. Okay. Now, it makes bearing removal faster, safer, and easier. It can also be used to remove gears, couplings, and shivs, so it's a multitasking type tool. Now, this type of tool also greatly reduces the chances of damaging the bearing journal when you're trying to pull one of these rings off. Mm -hmm. And damaging that journal and having to replace the shaft is usually far more expensive than buying the right tool to do the job, and you can use this tool again in the future. And this is also great for pulling teddy bears out of the carnival box. That had to be a pretty big teddy bear for a 10-ton puller. Well, yeah, that's true. I never thought about that. Well, Carl, thank you very much. That was thank Carl you. Casanova from NSK. Now, for more information on any of this, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location, and uh, hopefully this will help you with your practical application. As you saw earlier, Carl made sure that I put on my PPE. You make sure that you put yours on as well for whatever the job calls for. And you know what else? Look for other Motion Industries how-to videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. But thanks for watching today.